Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the sports section. And this time we have a very special edition getting some interviews, putting the WSB sports section spotlight on one of the star athletes of the upcoming spring semester. Dylan Palanetti of men's lacrosse is joining me today. Dylan, how are you doing? Good, good, good. All right, Dylan, obviously a lot to talk about from your tremendous uh, freshman season for Stony Brook to everything that's been going on through the offseason. But I think first got to touch on the big news that happened right before, obviously, the start of this men's across season. First, with just looking ahead in the future, Stony Brook to the CAA, how exciting is that? Yeah, it should be uh, pretty exciting. You know, uh, that's next year, though, so we're still going to focus on this year and just control what we can control. Yeah, uh, on that, obviously, of course, there's a lot going on behind the scenes in terms of, you know, the future of how – especially what's going to happen at the end of this season, of course, in terms of playoffs, things like that. How are you, how is that affecting the team or how are you pushing through past that to avoid letting that impact the team? Yeah. So uh, I think the first day it was a little, uh, everyone was a little set back and a little starstruck, but I think uh, coaches did a great job. Captains did a great job of just moving the team forward. And, you know, just the big thing we say is control what we can control. So we still go out there every day, give it 110%. Yeah, and you are one of the captains for the 2022 men's cross team. Congratulations once again. And you have found a lot of success last season. Tremendous impact on the team and program as a whole. How has that fueled your development as a player entering your sophomore season? Yeah, you know, I just look to go out there, practice every day, get better, try and lift my teammates up going 110%. So hopefully they can match it and then collectively we all get better. So. And I see you as a player, so many accomplishments. First player in America East history to win Rookie of the Year and Offensive Player of the Year as well. What goals do you have set up for this season to try to top that? Um, you know, I try not to look at that stuff. I just uh, try and focus on, you know, helping the team out, helping uh, where I can help, and uh, just going hard every day. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was evident from the start that you're going hard and just being a huge contributor to the team really just back to your first game as a retro freshman first game for Stony Brook last year I mean could you talk about that moment stepping on the field for Stony Brook and I, I forget if you're starting I think you are starting and just having a huge impact of recording the six goals which I think tied or set a collegiate record for Stony Brook for a freshman yeah I mean putting on the Stony Brook jersey for the first time was something special I'll never forget that and, um, you know, I got to thank my teammates for those little butterflies I had, but they uh, just calmed me down, had me uh, had me in the right mentality for the game, and uh, everything worked out. I just think it's funny you talking about butterflies because just watching you play, it really doesn't feel that way, that anything makes you nervous. You know, you're just so fearless getting to the net and taking shots from all around the offensive zone. 36 goals, of 55 points total. I mean, you're just a machine of finding your way to the net last year. Yeah, I mean, can't, that's my teammates. You know, we all work together, six of us on offense. So we just do a great job moving the ball. Yeah, and what was it like for you too, you know, as a freshman really stepping up to be in control a lot of the times of the offense, whether it's your teammates turning to you to get scores or going the other way? Um, yeah, that's just, I mean, just comes down to, when we practice and practice and what we do and everything, we apply it to the games and everyone has a role and we, we all work together. And with this as well, there's a lot of change going on over the all season. First, uh, several of your teammates, especially on the attacking front, uh, there's going to be new faces now. Obviously, folks like uh, Chris Kell Jr., uh, Tom Hahn, for example, those two graduating over the all season. So, Oh, what is that like to where you're going to have a few new faces up in that attack in midfield, like uh, Chris Merle coming from Virginia or uh, Kevin Mack from Michigan? Yeah, I mean, those are two uh, great pickups we got. They're, uh, they're great players. They, um, they bring it all every day, which helps our team. So, yeah, I mean, with, with them gone, uh, they were great. Loved them, but they're gone now, so it's time to move on and work with what we got. And Obviously, with this captaincy role, it obviously has a vital impact on the team and the development. Has it changed you as a player, as a person? Has it made you develop more? 
Um, no, I would just say uh, just uh, makes me want to just, you know, help everyone out, lift everyone up by going hard every day and just trying to set a role that people can look up to. Yeah, and with that too, just the personalities and just so many great guys on that team. Was there any difficulties with that, you know, being name captain or was it just smooth sailings and everyone kind of understands your role and their role as well? Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's pretty smooth sailing. Uh, got four other captains as well, so we uh, do a good job of trying to lead the team to success. All right, Matt is finally here. And Matt, I was very excited, of course, to talk to Dylan Palanetti, especially after his tremendous freshman season last year. Oh, absolutely. And uh, over the course of the year, I think you were trying to feel it last year. You're trying to feel what your role was going to be. And you didn't want to necessarily overstep uh, as far as the under upper class were concerned. This year, I'm sure the expectations are higher and a lot more of the offense is going to go through you. Uh, are you expecting that to happen more or are you still, you know, just want to just fulfill, just fulfill your role? Uh yeah, I try not to look at that. When I don't really look at that. I kind of just go out there and just play lacrosse. And that's with the uh, other people I got on my line and the middies. And we just play play all together and see what happens. Has uh, Ken mentioned the fact that your brother is now joining you? Yeah. Or no, he hasn't. But Yeah, okay. But now, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure that when you got here, you said, hey, come on. Uh, How did that work out? How did that, how'd that unfold? Um, kind of always had the itch to, you know, get back out there. So I think, uh, after the season, I kind of got in his ear a little bit, told him to come back and then he did. So now it's great. How much did you play with each other when you were at Ward Melville? Uh, we played with each other for our whole life, but at Ward Melville, uh, I think three, three years together on the Ward Melville team. Okay. So, uh, are you going to be working on the same line together and everything like that, or? Uh, no, not this year. Okay. Go ahead, Ken. I was going to say, it's still early, you know. <laughs> Who can tell? Obviously, yeah. of course, just with that chemistry, of course, could always play a big factor, especially uh, later down on the stretch. But, again, how important has that chemistry been between uh, you and your teammates uh, over your past couple seasons? Yeah, that's uh, definitely big, you know, knowing where teammates are on the field, knowing what their tendencies are what they're going to do so just learning uh learning what they do a lot is helps a lot and so it brings success and we know obviously you're going to step up and bring it big but do you see other teammates whether it be incoming transfers or maybe former underclassmen who are now upperclassmen who you think are really going to step up and shine on the attack this season um yeah i think from top to bottom our attack's very strong um we all bring it our all every day and, you know, just make each other better. So um, I'm going to have to go with everyone, everyone in the attack line. They're, uh, they're all great and we work hard. So, yeah. Getting the ball is always important. And uh, how do you like the uh, face-off situation right now? Good. Yeah. Uh, obviously just, and just looking back at the attack too, Stony Brook was the best team uh, offense, at least in terms of scoring through the entire regular season in the America East. And that kind of faded away at the end of the season, especially in the postseason. So how much did that that end of last year really stick in your mind and your teammates' mind throughout the offseason? Yeah, I mean, uh, losing is always tough, but um, it leaves a chip on your shoulder. And I think we all remember the feeling last year. So um whether it was all fall now and then as the season starts, you know, just we remember that it sits in the back of our heads, but it makes us uh, makes us just go even harder every day. Well, going hard is important, too. But did was there anything that you think other teams picked up later on in the year that might have slowed you guys down? Um, no, I don't I don't think so. I think um, we just got to. Uh, control what we can as a team, as an offense, and then uh, we can figure things out with that, then we should have success. Yeah, and final question for me is just on that. It's, you know, obviously how last season ended and the team allowing faces, expectations are high once again. So we're tag 
second in the conference poll. And obviously the team goal is to win it. What is this team going to have to do in order to go all the way and potentially clinch a spot in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, we just got to go 100% every day. Just, um, like I said, control what we can control. Not look at what happened and we uh, should have success. I'm uh, just trying to think if you know, try, also not don't want to uh, yeah, ask the same question over and over again. But without the tournament, does that make the non-conference schedule more important to you guys? Uh, I guess it's just a game. The game's a game, so uh, not going to outweigh all that stuff. Just go out there and play a game like we normally would. All right. Well, thanks again, Dylan, for joining us on another edition of the WSB Sports Section Student Spotlight. Best luck to you and the men's lacrosse team this season. For more interviews like ours with Dylan, check out WSB Sports on YouTube, Spotify, and WSB.FM, WSB 90.1 FM.